Welcome! Last week I made uh, about 100, 110, 120 uh, cups. And now I'm going to see if I can fit them all into my kiln. The cups are really nice to fire because they, they leave very little empty space. So it's very efficient to fire cups. So I never tried to fire a complete kiln just with the cups. But I think I can make five layers, maybe 25 cups in each, maybe 20. So let's see how that goes. Of course, when you um, when you take your unfired uh, greenware and it's completely dry, it's also very fragile. So uh, you have to handle it very carefully. Uh, I've broken a few pieces this way, and it's I mean, I hate that. So I have uh, three uh, different designs, and I'm going to make each layer in um, the same design. Uh, it's going to make it easier to adjust the height um, of each uh, shelf. One thing you need to um, be aware of is because I trimmed these ones a little bit, so there's uh, could be a little bit of um, of leftovers in there, and of course, you want to get rid of that before you fire it because when you um, when you fire it, that could um, burn their way into the button and, and it's difficult to remove. So I'm gonna clean all of them. Um, and just be very very careful <laughs> when you do this. Sometimes it can be easier to get it out with a brush, especially if it's a very uh, tall cup. So, ready with the first tray full of cups. One of the first things that I do after I place the first couple of cups is to find the right um, height between my shelves. And uh, I think this one is going to be good. So now I just need to fill the rest of the layer with this design of the cups and then move on to the next. As it turns out, I could actually fit not only the 23 little fatty ones, <laughs> but also uh, three more uh, cups. So a total of 26, if I can count correctly, in one layer. And as you see, I haven't stacked them or anything. I could do that in a bisque fire, but I deliberately didn't do it because right after this bisque fire, I'm going to glaze them and do a glaze fire. And I want to see how many I can fit in a glaze fire. And this is sort of what I could do with that. So now I'm going to move on to the next layer. Because the next layer of uh, cups were a little bit slimmer, uh, I could actually fit 35 cups in one layer. And as you see, there is a little bit of space between them. Maybe I will have to take a couple of them out when I do the glaze, but I can almost have this many. And they're not very high, uh, so it's like very little waste of space. For this next layer, the third layer, some of the cups are a little bit higher. Uh, there's one design with a little bit higher. And as you can see, I could maybe fit the uh, shelf here, but I just don't want to take the chance. So I'm going to add a little extender to that. And for that, I have these little ones. They're actually made to, to extend, um, so you can put another one on top. But in this case, it just adds a centimeter or so, so I'm sure that they, they fit. 
you've got to make sure that you do this because I mean I have broken a couple of vases once because I thought it fitted and then I put down the plate and then immediately I heard like <coughs> ah damn so don't want to do that in the third layer I managed to uh, fit 26 cups that's still pretty good <laughs> uh, so that means if I can do 25 on average and I can do at least five layers because there's three layers here I can easily have two more that means I can uh, fire 125 cups in normal design so that's pretty good so despite being able to fit 28 of these cups uh, I could fit almost all the ones that I made except for one <laughs> but it's okay it's still only four layers for um, what I think is 110 maybe a little more cups that's good so now I actually have another layer that uh, is just wasted if it wasn't because I also have some uh, dried uh, bowls that I can add to that layer unfortunately I don't have any more full-size um, kiln um, uh, shelves so I'm gonna use two halves that's why I put up the, the, the supporter a little bit different so my last layer the fifth layer I have my lonely cup there <laughs> and then I actually added uh, how much one two three six nine bowls and just for the case I stacked two of them I could have stacked some more but I have plenty of space here so um, I'm just gonna leave it like that do my fire and in about 24 hours it should be cooled down to see the result that is a lot of pots <laughs> i think it's the biggest load i ever made so 110 maybe 112 cups and the nine bowls so yeah 120 something uh pots in this kiln and it's only 190 liters so i mean it's not a huge production uh, kiln it's still pretty good but that is because the, the shape of a cup means a lot of these kind of cup means that there's very little space wasted when you have a vase or, or a big bowl there's always a lot of space wasted but with the cups <laughs> i mean it's just completely filled up so i hope it goes well wish me luck it would be really bad to to, <laughs> to destroy that many pots but i don't think i will because it's a very stable kill so wish me luck and uh, i will see you when i unload good morning now it's time to unload the kiln. It was actually cold enough uh, last night. Uh, I think it was down to about 60 degrees Celsius, but it was late and I was lazy. So I decided to wait for this morning. And now it's only 20 degrees. So it's very easy to handle. Um, I do recommend that you wait. It's better to wait more than less to empty your kiln. If you open the kiln too early, it puts stresses on your heating elements and they will last uh, less time. So um, it's better to wait. I know it's annoying. You want to you wanna see the results, but for the bisque fire, the result shouldn't be that uh, surprising. Uh, so let's take a look and see how it turned out. There was no explosions, at least at the first layer. As far as I can see, there's no explosions deeper down. So this looks good. They um, ah, they're so light. It's always uh, a pleasant surprise when you open it. They they become lighter when you fire them uh, because the last uh, remains of water in the clay is um, of course removed. So um, they feel so nice and and now. You can handle them and my lonely cup over here <laughs> it survived too and that feels it feels very good uh, very light very nice i mean it's almost as light as um, porcelain and it is stoneware so i like this um swirly cut off that i made on these cups so it's nice now i just need to empty it that doesn't take so long um i can stack it a little bit and um, then we're ready to do glazing to glaze 110 uh, cups and nine uh, bowls could potentially take a lot of time. 
Um, but it doesn't have to do. I um, have some very efficient way of glazing. I think I can glaze all 110 cups in maybe two hours and then load the kiln and, and glaze fire. I will show you how I do that. When removing your shells, you have to be sort of careful because, I mean, usually it just goes well, but there could be little pieces falling off. There could be something from the bottom of the plate. So, you know, just, and you could tip it and hit a, a pot and uh, just be careful. Um, of course, you should turn off your, your, your kiln so there's no electricity inside it. And then just very carefully lift it up. Don't tip it around. There could be some loose uh, parts. Just take it out and then you can turn it around. And this next level looks, not surprisingly, good as well. Uh, there's generally less of a risk when you're firing um, uh, bisque fire. I mean, as long as you have a good kiln and everything is stacked well and, yeah, well, it's very less risky. There are, of course, many ways you can glaze your pots. You can uh, dip them, you can pour glaze over them, you can brush them. I usually dip them, especially with, uh, with cups. It is by far the most efficient and fast way to do it. So the first thing I do is I sort my cups um, in the different uh, designs and clay types. Um, and if you, if you already know what kind of glazes they will have, it makes good sense to, um, to also sort them by that. Um, in this case, I have two, um, three different designs and a couple of different uh, clays. And they're going to have a couple of different uh, glazes. If you want to do the most efficient and fast glazing, uh, the other thing you should do is uh, do them one glaze at a time. So don't glaze a few cups with this glaze, put it aside, take another glaze and glaze some cups and then get back to the first one. And that's very inefficient. So take one glaze at a time, whenever possible. Because sometimes, of course, you want to layer glazes. And in that case, you may have to get back to the previous glaze to do second layer or something like that. But, but try and organize it as much as possible. Because it's much easier when you get into a flow and uh, to just glaze all of them. For example, this um, design, little fatty ones, <laughs> whatever you call them, they will be glazed uh, only on the inside with this uh, Fogart um, gilt, white, I think it's called, <laughs> um, and not glazed on the outside. I like, I like that design. It turns even more dark uh, after glazed and with the white strokes of porcelain on the outside. So they are probably the easiest one to glaze. So I think I will do them first and they will be on the lower level of the, of the first level, the first shelf in, in the fire. That only takes a few minutes. For um, many of my other pots, they're going to be uh, glazed uh, on the inside as well as part on the outside. So I will glaze them down to maybe here or here. Some of them is just going to have one glaze inside and out here. Some of them are going to have uh, a liner, like a white glaze, and then I'm going to put dip in, in, a, in a different color here and we'll kind of meld in to each other, hopefully. Um, so they're also kind of organized in, in, in how I want to do that. In this case, the, these uh, cups are only going to be glazed on the inside so I don't need to wash them on the outside. And as you see, it's actually very fast. But I like to do this before I, um, I, I'm getting the, the glaze ready because um, then they have time to, to sort of dry. Before you apply your glaze, make sure that it is uh, probably mixed and there's no um, lumps uh, in it. If you haven't used it for a while, maybe you want to sieve it. This one, uh, Folk Art Gilt White, I'm using so often that it's uh, almost perfect. 
and I'm just going to steer it a little bit to make sure that there's nothing in the button or anything. So now we're ready to apply this. For these cups, I'm just going to uh, apply the glaze on the inside, uh, as I mentioned, and I have one here. As you can see it will turn much darker when it's uh, glaze fired. And then I just apply this uh, folk art gilt on the inside. It gives some nice variations, uh, white or light on some places and, and uh, iron, uh, brownish, reddish on other areas. It's, it's very beautiful. So that's very easy. I'm basically just going to pour something into this um, pitcher, or whatever you want to call it, measuring, um, and pour something in, turn it around, turn it out, and then we're going to clean uh, the edges. I actually missed a little bit in there. I just want to make sure that I don't leave any glaze um, on the outside because I just want it to be completely black and white. So, that was the first one. Another 25 to go. <laughs> now, all of the First design uh, mugs have been or cups have been um, glazed on the inside. The outside is not going to be glazed, and I think it's going to look beautiful. However, I will do one more experiment. I always like to experiment. <laughs> I uh, every time I glaze something, I do the majority of the glazing in a way that I know it's going to work, unless I'm testing out glazes specifically. But in this case, I know this is going to work. But what I don't know if, <laughs> if it's going to work is that I want to spray on two sides, not all the way around, but on one side and the opposite side. I want to spray with a little bit of uh, soda. So that's also what we use in uh, wood firing. And I'm hoping it will give me a few like flashes of variation on the outside. I'm not going to do it on all of them because it may completely fail and look awful, but I'll just try on maybe three or four of them and see how it goes. And maybe that will be my new standard for these little fatty cups. We will see. So basically I'm going to take some of this um, soda, sodium bicarbonate. Um, it's something that you also use in your household. This is a big box I bought in a professional kitchen market. I'm going to dissolve that in water. I have a spray bottle here and very, very simple. And I'm going to try and spray some of that on the pots. As it turned out, <laughs> the spray bottles I have couldn't really deal with, um, with the uh, soda um, solution. I think it's too thick for, um, for it to suck up into the small tube. So instead, I just put it in a bucket and I'm gonna, gonna brush a little bit of it uh, on. I have no idea if this is gonna work or if it's gonna be terrible or whatever, but um, I'm just gonna do the three <laughs> cups this time because as I said, I have no idea how it's gonna turn out, but uh, it'll be fun to see. And maybe it will be really, really good and that will be the standard for my mocks in the future, but it could also fail. It could also leave nothing. So let's see. In addition to the little fatty ones that I gave the folk art white 
gilt, gilt white. <laughs> I will also do uh, some of the the more slim, normal designs, but I will put it on the inside and then I will dip it uh, down to about here on the outside. The rest of it will be in raw clay. And this is also a very beautiful dark um, clay or dark gray. So when I also have to dip them on the outside, it's not so uh, um, problematic to have a few stains here because I want a fat uh, or fat layer of, uh, of, of glaze anyway. Also, these ones are a little easier to pour. Um, so it should be actually much easier to do these ones. And now I'm going to dip them, um, see if I can make it even, and um, yeah. And then you have to be careful not to turn it around too fast, because then it may run down. This one dries pretty fast, something like this. If you want to make sure that um, they did exactly the same amount, you can um, you can measure it and put a little um, mark with a pencil. It's gonna burn away. I don't care so much. I think my my eyesight is okay for this. So. That was um, everything with this glaze. And as you can see, <laughs> there's a little bit of a mess. Before you move on to the next glaze, it's important that you keep everything clean. So I'm going to remove this. I'm going to clean the table, take some fresh uh, newspapers to work on the next glaze. I don't want the colors to be mixed uh, together, at least not from me being messy. <laughs> So, ready for the next color. The next color I will be using is a red color from uh, Terracolor. I usually make most of my um, glazes myself, but the, the Terracolor glazes are actually pretty nice. They're expensive too, but I use them now and then. And this uh, red one, I never tried it on, um, on cups before, but I think it will look nice. I'm not going to do a lot of them, but I will do some and see how that turns out. And as always, make sure that your glaze is um, mixed well, because you want, of course, all the dry elements to be dissolved into the water. So um, no lumps, of course. This one looks good.
See, I splashed a little bit too much here, so I'm gonna remove that. Um, I will dip it, um, but not that far down, so I'm um, just gonna take off some of that. This uh, glaze, just like uh, many of the other terracotta um, glazes, changes color a lot depending on how thick <coughs> it's applied. So um, it's actually nice because then you don't have to think too much about how thick you apply it because it will just add to the variation. Yeah, a little more difficult. Have to get used to um, this glaze is a little more uh, watery, which is fine. It's the way it's supposed to be, but it just means that um, I have to pour it out in a little bit of a different way than the other one. That's uh, a little bit thicker. So. But you see, this way, it's actually pretty quick to um, to glaze a bunch of crops. And and this time I'm actually using a lot of different uh, glazes. In case you were just uh, using one glaze, um, it would be even faster. So, now I glaze them all on the inside, and now I will dip them. Now, you see this um, is actually running out. I still have enough, but you know, um, if you have too little glaze to actually dip them, what you can do is you can put it into a small container, because if it's smaller in diameter, it's going to be higher. So, but for this particular uh, um, application, I think it can work. I think I think this is gonna be good. So some of them, you know, it's splashed up a little bit on the sides. You can see it here. And I'm just uh, looking through them and see if it's something I want to fix. This particular one, I think it will actually be, be okay. But um, there was one, uh, let me see. Yeah, this one is running too much down. But you can clean that afterwards, so I will do that. Also, if you have heavy drips like this, you may want to remove it. Um, depends on the kind of glaze. For this particular glaze, I think I will actually like that uh, variation of the color. But, you know, you have to consider these things when you, when you glaze. Also, one like this, completely ran down, so of course I'm going to remove that. Now it's time to load the kiln, and I will basically do it the same way that I did with the, the bisque fire. So I'm going to put these little fatty ones in the button and uh, adjust it with a couple of uh, the other mocks, and then um, I'll just move on from there. So the first layer of cups uh, was easy to place because um, there's no glaze on the outside, so um, 
I can put them very close to each other. So I actually managed to get exactly the same number in the first layer, all the little fatty ones, plus three of the other cups. So I'm um, moving on to the next layer. Now I will move on with another one of my all-time favorite places, uh, Timiko Gold. It's a beautiful place that, uh, that is a black and golden yellow uh, where it breaks. So it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, place. And um, I'll try, I never used it on, on cups before. I used it on, a, on quite a few bowls and they turn out so beautiful. So I'm gonna try it on some of the cups. The Timico Gold is a beautiful glaze, but it's also <laughs> one of the most messy glazes I have. There's a lot of um, red iron oxide in it. And anybody who worked with red iron oxide knows how much it kind of stains everything. So you've got to be extra careful to, um, to keep things clean when you work with that. Anyway, I will start out the same way that I did uh, with, the other, um, with the other cups and uh, glaze them on the inside. Um, I think also these ones are gonna be glazed just a little bit on the rim on the outside and then leave some of it um, uh, unglazed. And I hope that will be beautiful. I'm gonna start out with these um, little ones, uh, or small ones. It's a, sort of a small design. Uh, I really like them like teacups or, I don't know, maybe whiskey. <laughs> I don't drink much, but um, who knows. They are made in a um, high cropped, uh, beautiful gray um, stoneware. And um, the funny thing is, it's actually possible for me with this, um, this clay to throw things uh, much thinner. Um, you wouldn't think so with a high grocked uh, clay, but, but it's actually actually how it works. So um, now I lost my sponge. Here it is. <laughs> yeah, because you see this, I don't want. It's always a little more tricky to get all the, the clays off when you have a crocked um, surface, but um, it is possible. The dribbles at the top, I don't care about because um, I'm gonna dip it anyway. Gonna keep your hands clean because as I said, all that red iron oxide, it just stains. It's sort of experimental for me to use the chemical gold on this clay. I haven't used that before, but on this clay, it's a black clay. Uh, it will be more black when, when we fry it. I know that looks good. Now I got stained my fingers <laughs> again. Now I'm ready to dip them. I will, like the other ones I did, dip them down to about here, so like maybe one third, and leave the rest of it unglazed. With this particular clay, I think that's gonna look great.
just gonna let it drip off a little bit because if I turn it around too soon, it may run down in the unglazed area. So see, that's perfect. Before I load them in the kiln, I will do the same as I did with the other pots. I will check if there's any drippings, if there's any things that need scraping off or washing off. I want the lower part to be glaze free. So if there's anything left, I'll just remove it now and um, it'll be perfect. This one looks good. This one has a little bit of a shadow of, um, of glaze here. It's not much, but it could leave some color that I just don't want. So that looks good too. See those little shades of, um, of glaze there? I don't know if you can see it. It's very little and it may only leave like a shadow, but I like to get rid of it. Even though I do like the randomness and imperfection of uh, pottery, uh, with, with glazes, I, I do like it to be perfect. <laughs> it's like the last step. Now they have all been glazed, but before I move them into the kiln, I want to let them completely dry uh, because it is much easier um, to handle them when the glaze is dry. Um, so I'm just going to go and drink a little bit of coffee and in a minute I'll be ready to load them. I managed to squeeze in 33 cups in the, the second layer. And doesn't it look beautiful? <laughs> I really love this. Um, and of course, it'll be even better when it's fired. So I'll move on with the next glaze. The next glaze is a very new one to me. It's uh, called Gumpler Yellow. Um, so I have no idea how it's going to turn out. Well, I think it will be good. It's a, it's a glaze from John Britt's book, uh, about uh, context glazes, and it's a very good book. I really recommend that if you wanna if you wanna go ahead and try and make your own glazes. Every single gla glaze that I tried from that book has turned out perfectly good. So it is a very good book, and there's about 400 recipes. Of course, I only tried a fraction of it, but for the cups and for this Christmas market, I'm going to. I wanted something yellow, fresh. <laughs> so. Um, I mixed up this, um, just a small batch, two kilo of powder, and uh, so I'll go ahead and, and glaze some um, cups with that. So I'm gonna start out the same way as I did with the other cups, glaze them on the inside, and then I'll dip them on the outside. Now this glaze is uh, new to me, so I don't know how thick of a layer it needs. I'll just try. Hope for the best. And this is really something that uh, you need to know uh, for each of your glazes how thick of a layer uh, it takes. It's a trial and error. Uh, there are some glazes like floating blue that needs a very thick layer. Um, the more the better. Um, and some glazes look really good when it's a very light layer. So um, you have to learn that with your own glazes and um, the glaze that you're using. Now I only have uh, two colors left. <laughs> One of them is actually going to be a combination uh, of Heath A2 white uh, on the inside and most of the outside. I'm just going to leave a little bit at the bottom. 
and then I'm going to dip it outside the rim with floating blue. Those two glazes work really well together. So it's going to be white on the inside and the floating blue is going to float, hopefully, a little bit. So I'll go right on with that. So now these ones are ready to be dipped in the floating blue. The floating blue is super thick. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of uh, Gersley Borat in it, and so it kind of gels up a little bit. But when you whip it, it becomes more fluid. But it's fine, because we need a very thick layer. Uh, so um, I'll go right ahead with that. So, something like this. I think this is going to turn out really good. There's even like, it's dripping small bubbles and stuff. But from my experience, I know that this is going to be good. So now, all of the white and the floating blue cups have been glazed. And again, I want to give them a few minutes to completely dry before I load them into the kiln, just to make sure I don't smudge it or uh, scratch off some, some glaze. So I'm going to go have a rest. I miscalculated the number of cups a little bit, <laughs> so I will actually be doing uh, two more colors. The first one here is called Seltzer Charm. It's a, a green glaze, um, very beautiful. There's a lot of um, you know, copper carbonate in it, and it sort of separates a little bit. So you gotta constantly um, uh, mix it up. But even if you do that, it does change a little bit on the surface, which I think is beautiful. But um, let's um, start with the inside glazing. I have now loaded the kiln with all the cups, uh, 110 cups glazed. I also managed to fit uh, seven of the small bowls, so not nine as I did in the bisque fire, because I can put it a little closer to each other with uh, the bisque fire, and I stacked two of the bowls, of course. And you can't do that with, um, with glazing. So now it's time to fire and uh, wait. <laughs> I hate that wait. But uh, it will take about eight hours to do the glaze fire, and then it takes about 24 hours or so to cool down enough for me to unload it. So, i see you when it's ready. Good morning! It is now Sunday morning, and I started the fire Friday night, kind of late, 10-11. Um, so it was done uh, Saturday morning, but then it takes almost 24 hours before it's cooled down. Now it's uh, 85 degrees, so it's safe to open it. Uh, it's probably a little bit too hot to, um, to take out the pots, but I'll have a peek view. It looks good. Of course, this is uh, the top layer with all the the bowls, um, but they look nice. Um, they're still a little bit hot. Um, and these cups, um, this is with um, the Lynette uh, Opal, um, which, as I said, when I put it on lightly, it's a light blue, 
and uh, white where it's um, more thick. So it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful glaze. And um, the bowls I gave um, the Fogart gilt white and it breaks so nice. And this is also the Linnet uh, Opel. Uh, they're not glazed on the outside, which is what I decided for this design. As I mentioned, they are still, you know, a little bit hot. Um, I'll try and remove um, the first parts and the first layer and see how the cups are turning out. I think they're beautiful. And I kind of like this, um, this application with no glaze on the outside. And um, yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> And as always, when you start uh, sticking your hands into the kiln, I suggest that you turn off the heat uh, or turn off the, the, the power. I don't think there's actually electricity in heating elements, but I don't know, if something goes wrong, it can seriously hurt you. So turn off the electricity. And uh, removing, um, removing the, uh, the shelves from a glaze fire it's even more important that you do it very carefully because uh, there could be yeah well some 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 something left that uh, could dump into your your pots see ah this looks good now look at this all these nice colors. Um, there's some with the with the floating blue um, over the uh, the white, the Heath A2, and there's the green, uh, the 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 seafoam chum, and um, yeah, that's the first layer. It looks really really nice. So. Um, I'll just let it cool a little bit more and then um, I will remove that layer and look into the next. The next layer, I think, will have some of that yellow. I'm not sure. I think it is. And uh, it's going to be very exciting because it's the first time I ever used it. So it may turn out really well and it may not. Let's go and see. The yellow is not as yellow as <laughs> I was expecting. Um, or is it a yellow? I think it is. Uh, maybe it's because it's on a dark clay. Maybe it would be different on a, on a lighter clay. We have some more of the, of the floating blue on white and the chemical gold. I really, really like that. Uh, the way that it breaks um, in black and turns completely gold, yellowish on the inside is just so beautiful. So um, all in all, not bad at all. I'm not exactly sure what is on <clears throat> the next layer, the second layer uh, from the bottom, but it will be exciting anyway. <laughs> it always is. Here we got some of the more chemical ones and my um, uh, folk art <laughs> gilt white, which is always beautiful on the dark clay. The red one is a little darker than um, what I tried before, but again, this is a dark clay, and I haven't tried it on a dark clay, only on a light clay. But it's a beautiful purple-ish um, color, so I definitely like it. Now, it's the last layer, and maybe the most exciting one, because that's where I have all the little fatty ones. Um, and as you remember, I applied, I brushed on some uh, uh, sodium, uh, a soda, uh, and I want to see if it left any effect at all, <laughs> or if it's terrible. I only put it on, was it three or four cups? So even if it's super bad, it's still okay. You should always experiment. It definitely looks good. Nothing is completely wrong, but that was kind of expected as I did this uh, design before with this clay and this glaze and so now I'm just going to see if I can spot any um, interesting things with the soda. So far, I could only find one where I can see some traces, 
traces of the soda. And uh, to be honest, I don't really like it too much. It it does give it sort of a wood-ash sort of uh, feel to it, but it just looks looks a little bit too dirty. It may change when it when it completely cools down. I will have to see that. But I'm not super happy about it now. But you know, that's what you do when you test. So that's it. <laughs> 110 cups and uh, 7 bowls. I'm going to have a closer look and um, just round this up. All in all, I think it was a very successful fire. Both the bisque fire and the glaze. I think I spent maybe 2 hours, maybe 3 hours glazing uh, all these uh, cups. And that's because I used a lot of different glazes. If I was only using one glaze or one glaze combination, I could have probably done it in less than two hours, maybe one and a half hour. Uh, so I hope that um, this shows to you how fast you can actually glaze if you're a little organized and um, line up your glazes and the different designs and colors you want to glaze. Nothing went completely wrong. Uh, they all survived and uh, I think all the, the, the colors looks nice. Some of them, of course, are different than uh, what I thought they would be. Uh, maybe the only sort of mistake is uh, the soda. It, it, so far, it looks like it didn't turn out so well, but that's only a, a few cups. All the rest is good. The yellow, of course, <laughs> didn't turn out as yellow as I was expecting, but then again, I've only seen tests on light uh, clay. And of course, the clay plays a huge role in your, in your glazing. I'm not saying I don't like the color, it's just surprisingly um, different. <laughs> anyway, um, that's all I had um, today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and, and if you did, please subscribe, uh, like, share, uh, write a comment if you have any comments, any suggestions for improvement. Uh, and I hope to see you soon again.